So in this video, I'll be split testing the GTX 1070 by NVIDIA with the RTX 2070 by NVIDIA. And this is coming from the perspective of a graphic designer, video editor, and just creative. So if this is what you're looking for, this comparison, then you're in the right place. Now there's a ton of comparisons out there for the GTX 1070 versus the 2070 as it relates to gamers and different gaming aspects. And so I wanted to put out this video because there is a lot of reviews on these GPUs, but not exactly in this perspective. As I said, my main skill is graphic design with complementary skills in video editing and video production. And so if I miss any details that you need or want as it relates to the comparison of these GPUs, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comment section and I would love to answer those questions directly. The second thing before we kick off this review is I'm using the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix versus the Asus Republic of Gamer Strix 2 to do this comparison. So each of these machines has the different graphics processing unit with exactly the same specs otherwise to give us a really clean comparison. So I'm using laptops to run this review just so you kind of have a heads up on what the computers that we're using to get these stats. Now if you're interested in these computers as we're going through the video, you can either grab them on Amazon with two day shipping in the affiliate link below or you can get a discount code over on Computer Upgrade Kings. Use the discount code BEN3 as you see it coming across the screen right now. And you can head on over there and get the discount for either of these computers. Now those are affiliate links, so I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But that's why these videos keep coming out and keep bringing you the helpful content on this channel. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the GTX 1070 versus the RTX 2070. And right off the bat, if you look at these uh, GPUs on Amazon or anywhere online, you'll see there's a substantial difference between the GTX 1070 and the RTX 2070. Now, what's interesting though, is if you go and look at these computers on, for instance, Computer Upgrade Kings or Amazon, again, you can check those links out in the description below, you'll find that there's not a substantial difference in the price between the two laptops. Now, you could be thinking, okay, well, if there's not a substantial difference, then why not just go for the better GPU? Well, as we go through this review, you'll see that there are differences between the GPUs, but in fact, that maybe you would wanna save some money and spend it elsewhere, or that GPU would be the buy that you would wanna make. And so that's the decision we're gonna walk through as we look at each aspect of using this graphics processing unit for either graphic design or video editing and which one works best for your individual situation. All right, so the first test we're gonna kick off is the 4K project exported out in 4K quality. And so this one actually surprised me quite a bit. So I have a 10 minute 4K clip in Premiere Pro and it's all been edited, it's, it's there, it's ready to go, it's ready to export. And when I export that clip in both of these computers, so the GTX 1070 and the RTX 2070, they both took exactly 40 minutes. Now, give or take a few seconds on each machine, but 40 minutes was the general export time for a 4K clip into full 4K quality ready for YouTube. I just used the quick YouTube setting. So the winner, a tie between the GTX 1070 and the RTX 2070. All right, now for my graphic design friends, we're gonna go into Photoshop, open up a raw image file, boost up the size of it, and then save it out as a full quality JPEG. Now, when I boosted up the size of this raw image, it was about a 1.68 gig file, and then I saved it out full quality JPEG. Now, for the GTX 1070, this took 11 seconds, and for the RTX 2070, this took 12 seconds. I don't know if like just the wind blew right on the export times or whatever, but they're very close. But for some reason that GTX 1070 just exported it faster. So the winner on that one by just a hair is the GTX 1070. All right, now back to some video editing specs. Let's look at the GTX 1070 versus the RTX 2070 for the 4K export into 1080p. So let's say you wanna save some time, you don't need massive quality, uh, and you're just maybe posting on YouTube, so you wanna film in 4K and then export to 1080p YouTube settings. And as I did this, both computers came out at seven minutes export time. And to be exact, it was like seven minutes, zero seconds, and 38.8 or something like that. So basically, it's substantially faster to export to 1080p, which is obvious for most video editors. Do know that when you're exporting in 4K, both machines got quite warm, I would almost say hot, and it had a lot of fan speed. So the winner once again for the export time to 1080p is a tie. 
All right, so the next two tests I wanna look at are the two that I really had a feeling that would set apart these two graphics processing units. The first one is rendering. And if you're a motion designer or a video editor that works a lot with motion graphics within their projects, then you know how much time this can consume just waiting for your files to render out. So if you have a project that has a lot of rendering files, it could take 20, 30, 40, 50, 90 minutes, nine hours. It really just depends on how much motion graphics you have in your project. So these tests I think are very important to consider if you're in that boat. All right, so on a non 4K project with 1300 frames, the GTX 1070 took about 23 minutes and 45 seconds to render the frames. Now that same project on the RTX 2070, the non 4K project with 1300 frames took about 19 minutes and 33 seconds on the RTX 2070. So that's a substantial four minute difference. And that may not sound like a lot, but if you extrapolate that on a much larger scale, it is a massive landslide difference. Consider this, that means a 10 minute project that is strictly motion design at 60 frames per second, you would be looking at about 36,000 frames to render. The RTX 1070 would take roughly 540 minutes, translating that into about nine hours of rendering time. The GTX 1070 would be taking roughly 648 minutes, translating into about 10.8 hours of rendering time. So when you extrapolate the numbers, you get almost two hours of savings. And I wanted to do the numbers on a semi-extreme end to help illustrate that there is some time savings that would come with the RTX purchase. So the winner in this standpoint is the RTX 2070 because you could save a substantial amount of time with rendering if you're doing very large motion design infiltrated projects, so to speak. All right, so the next thing I wanna look at is the playback. The reason I think this is important is you can play back at higher quality and you don't have to wait as much with lag time. So let's look at the two differences. We're going to be looking at the 4K clip again. All right, so the first test is the RTX 2070. I opened up only Premiere Pro on my computer and started to run it full playback. So you know there's a little option underneath the playback video. You can do full, half, one-fourth, one-eighth. So I started at full quality and the playback seemed fairly smooth with no other applications open. But I wanted to test it against the other applications as they started to open up and we started to get a little bit more fan speed. And as I clicked open, say Photoshop, I clicked open a web browser, it started to get a little bit laggy and give me a little bit of fan speed. So then I bumped it down to about half and it seemed fairly consistent at half. So I could run half quality with some other programs open and the playback seemed fine. Just to give it some test against running other programs alongside of it. All right, now comparing that with the GTX 1070, started up the program with the 4K file, started to begin to run the playback, and I found that it couldn't even get going at half. Once I bumped it down to a fourth, it started to give me some good playback, pretty smooth. And remember, this is with no applications running so far, just Premiere Pro open. And at 1 8th, I was able to get very smooth playback. So in conclusion, featuring these two laptops, specifically featuring the GTX 1070 versus the RTX 2070, again, links in the description below if you want to check out those models personally, the RTX 2070 would be the clear choice for a motion designer or high-level video editor. It has the rendering times and it has the playback that is essential in order to really get good workflow. Now, if I was a graphic designer, the reason I'd lean towards the first Strix model is because I could save that maybe 100 or so dollars, especially with the discount code. You can get that discount and save a little bit more, and then you can invest in upgrading that computer to say 32 gigs of RAM, rather than getting that GPU, which as a graphic designer really won't help you as much as having that if you're a video editor or a motion designer. So it really just comes down to the two differences. Um, so if I were you, I would go the GTX 10 70 graphic designer, upgrade that RAM, our video editor, I'd go towards the RTX 2070. So I really hope this video has been helpful today. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to do a full comparison between these two models if you're interested in that. You better check that out in the YouTube cards above or the description below. But for now, I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. I thank you so much for supporting this channel by watching. Comment below, hit the like button if you enjoyed this content, double tap the dislike button if you have not, and I'll see you here on the next episode.